Welcome to the CVPR 2022 tutorial of OpenMLab. OpenMLab, a foundational platform for computer vision research and the production. I'm Wen Wei Zhang from NTU MMLab. So uh, OpenMLab is an open source algorithm platform for computer vision. It aims to provide a solid benchmark and promote reproducibility in academic research. It has re released more than 20 high quality code bases in various research areas. Till now, OpenMMLab has implemented more than 300 algorithms and released more than 2,000 checkpoints. So uh, today's schedule contains five parts. First, uh, Dr. Kai Chen will give us an overview of OpenMMLab and its recent updates. Then Professor Chen Chen Zhiroi will discuss about improving video super resolution with enhanced propagation and alignment. In the third part, Dr. Han Hu will bring his recent thoughts about convergence of architecture and learning methods in computer vision and other AI fields. After a short break, Professor Han Zhao will introduce vision-centric 3D perception for scalable autonomous driving. Finally, Hao Dong will discuss about action understanding in a human-centric view. So, okay, let's invite uh, Dr. Kai Chen to bring us an overview of OpenMLive and its recent updates. I will firstly uh, brief introduce Kai. Uh, Dr. Kai Chen is currently a young scientist in uh, Shanghai AI Laboratory leading the Department of Open Source Algorithms, OpenMMLab. He received his PhD in 2019 from the Chinese University of Hong Kong and a bachelor's degree from Tsinghua University. He has published more than 20 papers on top conferences and journals in computer vision and won several awards on international challenges. OpenMMLab has gained more than 50,000 stars and involved nearly 1,200 contributors on GitHub. It is a highly influential open source algorithm system for computer vision in the era of deep learning and had, has, had a wide influential, has had a wide influence in academic and industry. So, uh, are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I need to share the screen. Oh, okay. Thanks, Wang Wei. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm excited to present OpenLab, the open source platform for computer vision. Today, I will give an introduction to OpenLab and share some recent progresses. My talk today consists of four parts. Uh, firstly, I will give an overview of OpenLab, and then I will share some recent updates of OpenLab. Next, I will talk about the technical design, and finally, I will give a quick tour for developers and researchers. OpenLab shares one uh, common architecture and the un Unified architecture supports all the code bases. Based on the uh, unified architecture, uh, OpenMap supports uh, more than 30 research areas. It covers ver various areas of computer vision like uh, classification, uh, detection, segmentation, etc. And it now supports more than 300 algorithms. It implements both classical and the most recent algorithms. And also, it released more than 2,000 pre trained models. It provides a unified areas currently. These are research areas currently supported by OpenLab, including both high level and low level tasks. We can see that most mainstream topics are covered, uh, including uh, learning methods uh, such as self supervised learning, uh, fusion future learning and also uh, weekly supervised learning. And also it covers uh, detection, segmentation, and uh, for video understanding, uh, multi-object tracking, et cetera. Now I will give a brief uh, view of the history of OpenLab. It was first released in uh, 2019 and initially there are only two packages, MMCV and MM detection. In 2019, four new code bases were developed. And in uh, 2020, 
2021, we support more, uh, more mainstream tasks such as classification, uh, segmentation, 3D detection, etc. In the last year, we keep open sourcing toolboxes for various areas and also collaborate with colleges and research institutes to work on more directions. In the future, we will extend the boundary of OpenLab and more is coming. OpenLab is based on PyTorch, the most popular de deep learning framework. We developed a foundational library for computer vision, MCV, which implements common modules like uh, image processing, video processing, uh, and uh, modules, and also CUDA operators. And also it provides a unified training engine, which supports all the code bases. Based on MNCV, we have code bases for different research areas. Uh, for uh, image understanding, video understanding, and also uh, image editing. Yeah. This code base is focused on the model training and cannot be applied to industrial applications directly. Uh, thus, we developed MNDeploy for model deployment. It bridges the gap from research to production. OpenLab has gained great community impact as its rapid development. It has received about uh, 60,000 stars on GitHub, surpassing uh, PyTorch. It is noted that OpenLab is not a competing library of PyTorch, and this is not a fair comparison. We just stress the impact of uh, OpenLab by comparing it to PyTorch. OpenLab users from, uh, now are from more than 110 countries and regions. And also it covers uh, more than six, 600 colleges and research institutes. Every year, the release checkpoints uh, are downloaded more than 1 million times. We have also built a community for developers. There are more than 1,000 contributors who, com who have committed codes to OpenLab projects. On GitHub, there are more than 500,000 nights of import statements related to OpenLab, such as import MCV, import MZ, import MZ, et etc. In the academic community, OpenLab projects are mentioned in more than uh, 1,000 papers. In this CVPR, it is adopted by 70, 76 papers uh, on various topics. Meanwhile, we have seen more than 20 change winners adopting OpenLab as their code base. We can see many big names from all over the world that use OpenMap for research or production, such as Google, uh, Microsoft, CMU, uh, et cetera. Actually, uh, most companies, uh, most big companies and famous universities uh, are using OpenMap in their research. Now, I would like to introduce some updates in the past year. Since July of last year, we released six new code bases in different areas. They are MSafeSoup for self-supervised learning, uh, MFuture for future learning, MFlow for optical flow estimation, uh, MRotate for rotated object detection, MRazor for model compression, and M3D for 3D human parametric model. We are glad that researchers and teams outside are contributing new projects to OpenLab. Uh, for example, MM Human Center 3D and M Rotate are maintained by our collaborators. Besides covering more areas in computer vision, uh, we are another milestone um, is MM Deploy, the model deployment framework. With MM Deploy, we can deploy OpenMap models to a variety of hardware and devices, uh, like GPU, uh, mobile phones, edge devices, with it. 
uh, industrial users can easily adopt OpenLab in their business for end-to-end -end solutions. Next, I will briefly introduce the newly released code bases. The first one is MSFSoup. It implements many popular self-supervised learning paradigms and algorithms, such as pretext pre task, contrastive learning, and mask, masked image modeling. There are more than 15 algorithms in MSFSoup, making it the most powerful toolbox for developing self-supervised learning methods. Moreover, we provide rich benchmarks and downstream tasks for evaluating self-supervised models. Due to the unified design, uh, unified design of OpenLab, users can evaluate the model in object detection, semantic, semantic segmentation, post estimation, uh, and so on, without modifying much code. MSFuture is the first open source code base that provides unified Im implementation and evaluation of future lear learning. Uh, here we show two tasks, future classification and future detection. The toolbox provides strong baselines and state-of-the-art methods in the two tasks. Based on MM classification and MM detection, users do not need to write lots of code to implement a new method and can adapt existing techniques to other classifiers or detectors easily. Optical flow estimation has been studied for a long time, and there are some traditional methods implemented in OpenCV. Uh, however, in the deep learning era, there lacks a unified code base for flow estimation. Thus, we develop uh, MMflow, the first systematic toolbox for optical flow estimation. It implements classical methods uh, like FlowNet, FlowNet2, and PWCNet, and some newer methods like Raft and GMA. Some methods just release the inference code and we re-implement the training and achieve comparable or even higher results. We decompose the flow estimation framework into different components uh, and makes it easily uh, and makes it easy and flexible to build a new model by combining different modules. Here is a demo of MFlow. Okay, let's move on. OpenLab has supported both 2D and 3D object detection, and now we extend it to the rotated bounding boxes. MMRotate is the most powerful and complete toolbox for rotated object detection. It provides three mainstream angle representations to meet different paper settings. It implements a variety of methods. Many of them are official code released by the authors. Uh, and also we can uh, yeah, we can uh, show the demo. Or oh, we can turn on the, the music. Okay. Uh, MS3D is an open source code base for the use of 3D human parametric model in computer vision and computer graphics. MS human 3D really implements popular methods that allow users to reproduce state of that results with one line of code. It is also convenient for rapid prototyping by simply modifying config files. Well, we also develop a unified data format human data to align all supported data sets, which makes data processing more convenient and efficient. And human 3D also provides a suite of differentiable visualization tools for human parametric model rendering. 
including uh, heart segmentation, depth map, and point cloud, as well as uh, conventional 2D or 3D key points. Uh, now we can uh, show some visualization. It's a model compression toolkit for model slimming and auto ML, uh, which includes three mainstream technologies, uh, neural architecture search, uh, network pruning, and knowledge distillation. Uh, we are developing the condensation module, and it will be available in a few months. Due to the similar architecture design of OpenML projects, we decouple the slimming algorithms and the vision tasks and the emulator can be easily applied to various tasks. Uh, with better modular design, uh, developers can implement new model compression algorithms with only a few codes, or even by simply modifying config files. Uh, yeah, we have no demo for emulator. Uh, next, we move to the production. Uh, besides developing more and more toolboxes for research, we step forward to production. From research to production, what we need to do is to deploy the model on specific devices, such as CPU, GPU, mobile phones. Uh, when we have developed a novel algorithm and obtained a, a PyTorch model after training, a general pipeline for model deployment is to first convert it, convert it to some intermediate representation or IR for short. Uh, for example, Onyx. And then we convert the IR model to the format accepted by the inference, by the inference, inference engine on the target device. During this process, we need to resolve some issues like how to convert the model, how to handle the operation operators that are not supported by the IR or the inference engine. Now we present the architecture of deploy, MM deploy. Uh, this, is, this is our solution. MM deploy naturally supports open map projects like MM class, MM dat, MM seg, etc. It mainly consists of three components model converter, SDK, and the backend extension ops. Model converter converts PyTorch models to IR models and IR models to inference engine. SDK provides simple and unified APIs to execute the model. And the users can develop applications based on the SDK. Backend extension ops are a set of operators used by both the model converter and the SDK. We implement lots of operators on different inference engines and devices. There are four major advantages of ML deploy. It supports various inference engines, uh, such as TensorRT, uh, Onyx Runtime, OpenVINO, NCN, uh, LibTorch, etc. And also, it supports uh, it supports multiple plat platforms. MM Deploy can uh, uh, MM Deploy is com compatible with Linux, uh, Windows, Android, or and also we are working on macOS. And also, it supports multiple uh, languages. You can program in. Uh, you can program with uh, C or C plus uh, plus, and also Python, uh, Java, or C sharp. So you can see that uh, uh, most popular uh, languages are supported by M deploy. Mm. Lastly, uh, we can uh, M deploy provides flexible integration to user systems. Uh, users can choose. Uh, what to integrate in, integrate into their own system, 
for example, they can just uh, uh, adopt the IR model, or they can use the inference engine models, or they can use MMDeploy SDK. And this is a more detailed uh, paragraph. Uh, okay, so we we have code bases and we train PyTorch models, and then we uh, use PyTorch to Onyx, PyTorch to or PyTorch to Touch Script, and also the Onyx optimizer to convert the PyTorch model to IR model. And then we use uh, Onyx to TensorRT or Onyx to Tens NCN or Onyx to OpenVINO to convert the Onyx model to backend model. Uh, lastly, we use the uh, uh, SDK to uh, pack the m 2 model. Here is an example. Uh, for example, we can uh, deploy RetinaNet to uh, the NVIDIA GPUs. Uh, firstly, we use the model converter, uh, just a single, uh, single line of command. Uh, for example, here we provide deploy dot, dot pi. Uh, and then it will convert the RetinaNet PyTorch model to Onyx model. And then uh, we can uh, get the the Onyx model and also the TensorRT model. Mm, here it, it, it consists of some uh, meta files and the uh, uh, TensorRT engine. Lastly, we can uh, use SDK to uh, run the model. Uh, here we use uh, Python APIs. Mm, so we can construct a detector and then use the detector to inference that image. So uh, it's just very simple. Okay, uh, we have introduced lots of open map projects and we say that it's very fancy, it's wonderful, it's perfect. But why? Since some papers may also release codes based on no code base, they just uh, build from scratch. Uh, but by adopting open MLAB, there are some significant advantages. The first one is a uh, united architecture. Users can learn not once and use everywhere. Since the architecture and APIs are almost the same for all OpenLab code bases, users can uh, implement. Uh, users can implement. Uh, so you users can uh, learn one code base and they have no pain in learning other code bases. Mm. And also, users can implement once and use everywhere. For example, uh, you can Im implement a backbone and register it in MMCAS and use it for object detection, segmentation, post estimation with just modifying the config files. Mm, the first, the second advantage is a united benchmark. Uh, OpenMap provides fair baselines for academic research. For some research areas, different papers may adopt totally different settings. And we cannot conclude whether the algorithm uh, works or the hyperparameter works. In, MM, in OpenLab projects, we study various training tricks and the hyperparameters. Uh, and, and finally, uh, form a unified benchmark for uh, all the methods. Uh, and the next advantage is modular design. Users can mm, Users are fast to develop and can try new components uh, in very few codes or just modifying the config files. Lastly, uh, the high quality implementation. OpenLab is efficient and also it can obtain, it can obtain high performance, uh, even higher than the original paper. And also it comes with good code style. You can uh, read it smoothly and fluently. Uh, and here are the uh, core design of uh, OpenLab. So the first one is registry. It is the basis of modular design. And the second is config. Uh, we use config to construct modules. And also we use config to manage experiments. And the third one is runner and hook. Uh, runner and hook can provide unified training interfaces. 
and also provides uh, customizable pipelines for users. So we can we we can have a brief introduction, brief overview of registry. So registry is actually a mapping from a string to a component or a string to a, a Python object. So um, when we use a decorator to register some class uh, in some registry, actually we build a dict uh, mapping from the class name to the class itself. Here we map ResNet, the string ResNet, to the class ResNet. And then we can uh, use build functions and also a uh, dict at the config to build the ResNet module. So uh, we can build an instance with custom configs. This is very simple, uh, the idea of registry. Mm. And then we can show the config. We you in OpenLab, we support uh, Python files, uh, JSON or YAML files as the config file. Here we just demonstrate the Python, Python files. We can use a Python dict uh, as a config and it can construct a module like uh, in the right. So it's basically a um, faster, faster RCN and we can build the back, backbone with a, a config dict. Uh, specifying the type is ResNet and the, the neck is FPN and the IPN head is IPN head and our head is the standard our head. Mm -hmm. And the last one is a runner and a hook. So um, what is runner and a hook? Uh, we can see an ImageNet example like in the left. Uh, we will we we need to write some uh, build functions to uh, construct a model optimizer and train data loader first, and then we use a for loop uh, to uh, run several epochs. And in the in and in the for loop, we have another uh, for loop to iterate the data loader uh, and uh, to iterate the data loader to uh, feed the data and for the model and also um, step the optimizer. So this is the inner loop for the iterations. Uh, and we we just give an abstraction for the whole process. So the runner is the execution loop and the core logic such as fetch data and for the model. So we can just wrap some core codes in the model dot train step. And also we have to uh we have two uh two loops, the outer loop for epoch and the in inner loop for iteration. Uh in each um, in each uh in each red uh as shown in the figure the uh the red square, um, we can execute some custom uh logics or custom uh methods. For example, adjust learning rate, or we can update the time, update the timer. So um, these custom logics and the facilities, um, we uh, abstract. We have an abstraction uh, as hook. So we can see another example. Uh, here, when we have uh, some, uh, we have more hooks. For example, before run, uh, we can execute a custom hook. And also before train epoch, we can uh run the this we we can run the this this sampler hook. It will uh initialize the sampler and set some seeds. Uh, and also um, before train iter, we can execute the learning rate of data hook and the iter timer hook. And after the train iter, we run the we run the optimizer hook, iter timer hook, and logger hook. And after the training epoch, we can uh, use the checkpoint hook to save the checkpoint and also evaluate MAP hook to run the evaluation. And before uh, exit the training process, we have the after run hook. We can do some uh, custom logic here. Okay, so this, these are the uh, core design of OpenLab. Lastly, I will uh, give a quick tour for developers and researchers uh, on how to use OpenLab. 
we use two common cases for illustration. First, we show how to support a new data set, uh, taking uh, new images for semantic segmentation as an example. Then we demonstrate how to develop a new model and apply it to multiple tasks, taking Swing Transformer, for example. The two examples are also released on GitHub. You may scan the QR code to find out more details. Before we dive into the details, I will propose the general guideline for setting up a project. As best, exper as best practice, we can separate the dependencies and the project itself. Uh, dependencies like MMCV, MMDAT, or MMCLASS can just be installed with pipe as other uh, normal Python libraries do. The project can be maintained in, a, in an isolated folder. In this way, we decouple the project code with OpenLab libraries, making it easier to upgrade the version of dependencies. And there is no need to fork MMDAT or MMCAS uh, repository. Now I would introduce a useful tool meme. Uh, MIM serves as the package manager of OpenLab. We can use it to install MMCV, uh, MMDAT, MM segmentation. Mm, it can infer the environment and the dependencies and download the corresponding pre-built packages automatically. On the other hand, it provides unified entry, po entry points for scripts. For example, MIM, MIM trend MMDAT is equi equivalent to running the trend high uh, script under MMDAT uh, tools. And now we can have a more, uh, we, we can have a more uh, direct demo. Okay, we can type MIM install MMCV4 and it will search the uh, proper pre-built packages and install it without compiling. And also we can uh, type MIM install MMCLASS. It will resolve all the dependencies and the install MM classification. And we can use MIM list. It will show uh, we have installed MC4 and MMCLASS and the corresponding versions and source. And also we can use MIM train MMCLASS and some config files and arguments. Yeah, so we can the training uh, started. Okay. Uh, so with mean how to uh, support a new data set. Uh, there is generally uh, four steps. So first, uh, the first step is process the data set. Uh, and it is, it is optional. Yeah, uh, because some data sets are complicated or and needs, we need to process it. And uh, other data sets, we just need to download and extract it. And the second step is to implement a new class. The class is a data set class. And then we modify the config file and finally we can train and test. Okay, uh, let's see how to uh, process the data set. In the project folder, uh, we, can, we can write a, a script named new images converter.py. So we can uh, implement our logic here to process the downloaded data set uh, into the into the right part, yeah. And then we can implement a new class. Uh, here is a, a new images dat dataset.py. So in this file, uh, we can use MSEC as a library like PyTorch and the Dutch region. Uh, and then we can write a class, a new image dataset. It inherits from a custom dataset. And we use a decorator uh, at datasets dot register module to register this dataset into the dataset registry. And in the dataset class, we override the load annotations master. Yeah. So this is all we need to do to implement a new uh, dataset. Uh, then we can modify the config files. Uh, so here we have many, uh, we can see that uh, there are more than one config files because we uh, de decompose the whole pro config file into some basic some into some basic components. 
for uh, easier combination without writing uh, duplicated code. Of course, uh, users can write a whole config file without uh, such pieces. Okay, so in the config file, we just define the data pipeline of the data set. This is how to process the data sets or the augmentation, uh, the uh, data pre-processing, etc. And uh, we don't forget to uh, import the data sets or import the module. So making the data set file imported, uh, making the data file import so that uh, the new image data set class can be registered. Uh, after we finish this, uh, these steps, we can train or test the, or test the model um, just with meme train MMSEC or meme test MMSEC. Then we will show how to develop a new model. Uh, there are three steps. Uh, the first one is implement the model, and then we modify the config file. And lastly, we train and test. This is basically the same with the uh, the same as how to uh, implement a new uh, class, uh, how to implement a new data set. So firstly, we just implement the model class. Uh, here we just ignore the, um, the, the fold function or the detailed implementation of student transformer. We just uh, we, we just write the class here. So uh, we also need to use the decorator to register student transformer into uh, the backbones registry. Uh, okay. Then we will also modify the config file. So if, uh, we can see that when we are training the image class file, we just need to uh, specify uh, the backbone as type is uh, swing transformer. And also the head is swing linear head. Uh, okay. Uh, and if we want to use uh, swing transformer in MM, uh, in MM stack or MM that, we can specify that uh, the backbone is um, type equals to MM mm class dot swing transformer uh, because the swing transformer uh, is registered in the mm class uh, registries so we can use it uh, also very uh, in a very simple way without need without um, implementing it in mm uh, that or mm set and finally we can train the swing mass class again with mm detection yeah uh, and you can find out more details uh, by scanning the QR code. Okay, uh, that's all, uh, all the presentations. And here are some resources, uh, our homepage, our GitHub page, and also our Twitter account. Yeah, we, you, can, uh, you are free to scan in these QR codes to get more resources. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um... Uh...